So the way to think about it is modular addition is fundamentally about rotation around the unit circle, or at least it yep. is equivalent to thinking about rotation around the unit circle of angle, say, 2 pi over n. And you can think of the integer a as the um, rotate by the angle 2 pi a over n. Yep. And you can represent this with cos 2 pi a over n and sine 2 pi a over n, which kind of parameterize that rotation. And you can take the two inputs, a and b, rotate by 2 pi a over n and 2 pi b over n, and you can compose them to get the rotation 2 pi a plus b over n. Yep. And this is now the sum, but it's also the sum mod n because it wraps around the circle if you get too big. Yep. And you can compute this by just taking multiplication of pairs of the trig terms and like adding them using trig identities. And then to get the seeth logit, you rotate backwards by 2 pi c of n hmm. to get a rotation by a plus b minus c yep. times 2 pi over n. And you look at what this does to the axis, you like project this onto the axis of the circle. Yep. And this is one if you've done nothing, i.e. c equals a plus b mod n. And it's less than one if you've done some rotation. So yep. this is biggest at the correct answer. Yep. And that's the that's the basis of this algorithm. Yes. But there's a you do it uh, sort of at different speeds of moving around the circle, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Or like I think a way I would think about this is like if you rotate around at different frequencies, like the things that are sort of in second place along these axes, uh, they change. Hmm. Because you're sort of like stretching out, like when you multiply by a different frequency, you're sort of taking the circle, stretching it out, and wrapping it around itself like a few different times, kind mm. of. I like. It. I don't know how clear this is via audio, but <laughs> but you're basically changing which things are second place. So this, yes. So you can't have a thing that's in close second place. 